check out our Facebook Varun Lahaprasit or New Hope International Church or YouTube New Hope English, Instagram New Hope International Church and TikTok New Hope International for more teaching content. May the Lord bless you. I would like to welcome you to, into the teaching of the Word of God. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that may have it more abundantly. I believe that the Lord wants to bless you super abundantly. And one of the ways that He wants to bless you is to give you the truth and the truth to set you free. God bless you. See you in the teaching. Let us pray and believe that God will speak to us in this teaching. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you by faith. Right now, spiritually, we want to approach your throne of grace boldly to receive your help by your grace, Lord. We believe, Lord, the Holy Spirit will speak to our heart and help us to understand and have revelation and light from heaven so that we can practice what we learn. And we are doers of your word. We are not just the hate knowledge Christians, but we are practical Christians. We want to practice what we know, what we believe, what we learn from your scriptures by the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I would like to continue to talk about the important subject in Christianity, even though it's a simple message. But I think we need to be reminded off and on how to walk with God and how to walk in this world. It's good to be reminded. And I believe that all of us still on the way to the perfect will of God. We are somewhere in our journey to reach to the perfect will of God. I would like to start by reading Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. This is a subject of God. God is love. Therefore, when we talk about love, we talk about God, the agape love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. For all the law, all the law in this book is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. God is love. And the first commandment is we should love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our spirit. Why should we love God? Number one, God is our creator. Number two, God is our savior. He loves us so much. He loves us first. He sent Jesus Christ to suffer on the cross and die for us, shed his blood for us. Three, he gave us so much gift. He loves us. Do you know that your thumb is a gift from God? Do you know that your nose, whether big or small, is a gift from God? If you want to be bigger, you can go to plastic surgeon. But it's a gift from God. Your ear is a gift from God. Your ability, your talents, everything you have in your life is a gift from God. You don't deserve it. He gives you the gift. He gives you beautiful nature, the beautiful flowers. Not only that, He protects you. He provides for you. He heals you. He gives you so many things. That's why we should love Him. We should love Him with all our heart. But He always say as well, we should love our neighbor as ourselves. After these teachings in a, this few Sundays, I hope that you grow in love and you're going to walk in love. You can ask yourself every day this question. What I do here, what I say here, my response here, is it done out of the love for my neighbor? Or is it done just because of duty? Or because I have to? Or because I get money? Or because I get some benefit for myself? Everything you do, you do out of love or not. If you do out of money, gain. Anything else, you don't love. Love means you do it unconditionally. James chapter 2, verse 8. I read many scriptures here to show you that this truth, okay, by the way, in order to get the doctrine or the principle in the Bible, 
the Bible says that the truth has to be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Two or three witnesses. So this is how I walk with God. I will find scripture to confirm what I believe. Two or three scriptures. So you come up with the truth by confirming with two or three scriptures, and after that, you will experience it. This is the way we walk with God. We find the truth in the Bible, confirm with two or three passages of scripture. We walk in it, and you experience it. If you don't experience it, maybe your doctrine is wrong. So God can give you experience. Second scripture we read here, agree with Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. If you really fulfill the royal law, this one was written by James. Galatians was written by Paul. According to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. God said, good job. You do well because you love your neighbor as yourself. You want to be that kind of Christian? You love people around you. God sent to you. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. This is about Christian community or the family. The uh, family, husband and wife and kids, love one another. And the Christian family, we love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. And knows God. How can we tell a person is born again? Very simple. You don't need to wear the cross or have the earring with the cross on your ear. You don't need to walk around carrying the Bible to show that you are a born again Christian. Sometimes people walk around and act like I know the Bible a lot. I think the most evidence of being born again Christian and you know God you're born of God, is you love. Love is a sign of being born again. You love God, you love people around you, and you practice love all the time. Love is the way to show that you are born again. You come to church on Sunday not because you have to, because you love God. You wake up in the morning on Sunday. You go to care group because you love God. You go on a mission trip, not because you have to, because you love God. You give tithe and offering, not because you have to. It's not about the law, but because you love God. You open your home to welcome the guests from out of town and let them stay there in your house for a few days because you love God. All is done by love. You are a good employee in your company. You go to work on time. You work hard for your boss. Your faithful employee. Because you love God and you love your boss and you love your company. Everything is motivated by love. Even driving in a, on the street, when you drive and somebody wants to come out in your lane, and you can think these two ways. It's my lane, okay? I'm going to go. You have to wait. Maybe somebody else. But because you love this, the way I and Pastor Da practice on the road every day. When somebody tries to turn out or move into our lane, we just slow down, let them go. Even the stranger, because we love them. Love dictate your whole life, everything you do. The way you write text message, email, the way you talk to people, you ask yourself, do I express love to these people? The way to walk Christian life is this principle. The, the most important one is love. The way to walk Christian life, number one, walk by faith. Do you walk by faith? Two, walk by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Three, walk in the fear of God so that you will not sin against God. Four, walk according to the wisdom of God. Five, the most important thing, walk by love. Do you know why we need the other four? Because there are wolves and bad people out there who want to take advantage of you. So even though you walk by love, but you need to be wise. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit because some scammer may call you 
or email you, uh, please help. But actually, they are scammer. They want to take your money. And by that time, you need to, Holy Spirit, should I do something with this email? Should I keep money? Should I do something? And the Holy Spirit know that these are the wolves, the bad people that they want to take money from you. And the Lord may say to you, hey, don't respond. Because that's why we need the wisdom. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. But again, we walk in love. 1 John 4, 11, Beloved, if, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. You go to church, you become a member of the church not because the church gives you some benefit or because they have a nice carpet or nice chair or nice worship program. No. You go to church because you love people there. You love your pastor. You love brothers and sisters. Love is the most important motivation. But definitely, you need to ask the Holy Spirit what church you need to join. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit because there are so many good churches out there in each city and you need to find out from God what church I need to be in a part of that church. Who is your spiritual father? Who is your pastor? You need to be clear. And when you join that, you say, I'm here because I love, not because I gain some benefit. Amen? Amen? I remember when I was a new believer, I was in a small town east of Thailand. And I joined a really small little Baptist church. And there's another bigger church, much more powerful. And I asked God, should I stay here or should go to that big, big, big church, more powerful? God said, no, you stay here. So I stay and I love my American missionaries there. They, they are my pastor. I love people there. Most people there were very poor. Uh, they, some of them healed from leprosy. They were in the church, so I served them, loved them. I just walked in love to these people, even though I was only one year old Christian. Because I know I need to love God with all my heart. I love my neighbors. I love people in my church. That's where God wanted me to be there for three years until I moved here. So you need to ask God. The reason you're in the church is because you love people there, not because of your personal benefit. And the early church practiced that. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the early church disciples, the first group of truly born-again Christians, and they continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine. Basically, they love God so much, they want to listen to the word of God through the apostles. They love God. When you love God, you want to hear what God say. How you hear what God say? Study the Bible, read the Bible yourself. In that generation, they don't have the Bible like us because they are first generation Christian. So they listen to the apostle teachings. They want to know what God say. How you show love to God? By obeying God. When you love God, you obey God. If you tell me you love God but you don't obey God, I don't believe you love God. The evidence of loving God is obeying God's word. And when you, want, you want to show love to God, you want to know what God says to you. When I was a new believer, I never forgot. First year, right away, I went to a church, a very big church in Bangkok. And I talked to the CD at that time, not CD, I'm sorry, tape table. There was no CD at that generation. Uh, sister, can I see the list of the teaching in your church? She showed me the list, maybe about 500 Tapes, series. How much per tape? 20, about 50 cents in that generation. 50 cents. I want them all put in a box for me. I want to listen to everything your pastor say. And those tapes, if you go to my home today in my garage, it's still there. I still keep them. I listen to every teaching. You know why? The motivation I have, because I love God. Jesus died for me. I want to know what Jesus wants me to do. I want to understand my loving God. I love him. I want to understand. I want to read the Bible. I want to know what he says. That's why the early church say, continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship. Fellowship means love one another. They spend time together in fellowship. They love to spend time. I, 
I was so glad yesterday my son came back from the young adult trip, and he said, "Wow, today I have fun." And I said, "Why? Because I spend time with my brother and sister. It's so good." Wow, I'm so glad to hear that. Then he enjoys spending time with the brothers and sisters, the young adult group, having fun together, eat together, laugh together. It's so fun to be in the fellowship. And thank God, the young adult group, the upper age limit is not 40, because I can join too. Pastor Dan, I still young adult. Acts chapter two, verse 46. Every day, they continue to meet together. Every day. Wow. In the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. As I say again, the reason you come to church, not because you have to or because it's a religious duty. You come to church because you love God. And two, you love brother and sister. You want to meet your brother and sister in the church on Sunday. Hi, how are you? How, how is your week? You can eat together, laugh together, have fun together. You love God and you love one another. That's why you set aside the time to meet. Believe me, our life is so busy with a lot of stuff. If you don't set aside the time to meet together on certain hours and certain days of the week, and Sunday you say, this is a Sabbath day for me, I'm going to seek God first. I'm going to go and tell God I loved you. And at the same time, I can meet brothers and sisters and show love to brothers and sisters. Love is the way of life for Christianity. Amen? Amen. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Wow, the Bible talks about this a lot. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. It's one thing about calling yourself, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Lutheran. It's one thing. But by the way, when you go to heaven, God doesn't care about Lutheran and Catholic and Baptist. There is no denomination in heaven. In heaven, only born again Christians. Those who love Jesus will be there. In the eyes of God, the question is, do you believe in your Savior Jesus? Do you repent and do you really love Him? That is the most important thing, not just religious title. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law. And the prophets. So, all the, throughout the Bible here, you can conclude into two commandments. The law of God. Conclude into love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. I just want to remind you, this is a Christian life. Love. It's not about religion. It's not about knowing Greek and Hebrew and quote all the scriptures and preach to people. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Sometimes people show off that I'm a Christian. I'm so good. I'm preach, preach. Knock on your head with the word of God. If you don't believe, you go to hell. No, that's not love. If you love, you don't curse people like that. You just say, God loves you. Amen? Amen. So everything you do, you do out of love. Amen. Now I'm going to read the story that Jesus talked about love here. In Luke chapter 10, 25 to 37, I'm going to read and show you how we walk in love. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Eternal life is important. Okay, as I mentioned, we're all going to die one day. No one's going to live forever. The question is, after we die, where are gonna, we going to spend for eternity? In heaven or in hell? How many people want to spend eternity in heaven? Raise your hand up. Wow, thank God. How many people want to stay in hell? Oh, thank God. You make the right choice. Okay. You need to, you want to spend time in heaven. I heard so many stories about people die and then, they went to hell and they came back and this, 
saw Jesus and they became a Christian. I heard this story on and on and on all, all over the world. I just heard another one last weekend too. This past yesterday, somebody died, and God took him back, and he saw hell, and he became a Christian after he woke up. I think this happened in Thailand. Yeah, somebody in Thailand told me the story. A man died in the bed. His spirit left him. He went to hell, and Jesus said, "I give you the second chance for you specifically. Come back." He came back and he gave his life to Jesus, and he became a Christian. So people saw. I mean, uh, the, okay, that's this story now. I remember, the doctor already told the whole family he is dead. He's coma and dead for sure. His brain is dead. He came back, and the doctor in Thailand said, "What?" Why he came back and he became normal, and he gave his life to Jesus because Jesus showed him eternal, eternity. So, do you want to have eternal life? Yes. yes, me too. He said to him, "What is written in the law? What is your reading of it?" So he answered and said, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbors as yourself." And he said to the guy, "You have answered rightly. Do this." And you will leave. But he, wanting to justify himself, he want to give excuses, not to love God, not to go to church, not to give, not to serve. He just want to live for himself. He just want to give excuses and said to Jesus, "And who is my neighbor?" Then Jesus answered and said. A certain man went down from Jerusalem. This man is a Jewish man, to Jericho, and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. He was so wounded, bleeding, dying. He was robbed, in bad shape. Now, by chance, a certain pastor. From a mega church, came down. I mean, the priest came down that road. An evangelist, a man who preached the word all the time, came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Let him die. Likewise, a Catholic leader, a deacon of a church, a worship leader. A leader of a church, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked. Oh, wow! He came by and looked too. He looked, and passed by on the other side. He did not even touch that man. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Everyone say compassion. compassion. When you love, you have compassion on people. You want to show grace and mercy. When you show grace, it means you give them what they don't deserve. When you show mercy, it means you don't do to them what they deserve. Are you getting this? When you show grace, you do good things to people they don't deserve. That's what God did to us. And when you show mercy to people, you don't do things that they deserve to get from you, like kick. You don't kick them. You slap them. They deserve to be slapped, but you don't slap because you show mercy. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds. Now he start to spend time. So to. He he is busy too. I think he can keep going. He bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil. He spent money now, spent his own thing, and why? He did not send the bill. He gave, and he set him on his own animal. He let this guy go into his Tesla, and brought him to an inn. He took him to a very nice hotel, took care of him. 
On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii. He took out two thousand dollars, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, "Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you." So, which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said. He who show mercy on him, then Jesus said to him, "Go and do likewise." The Bible tells us clearly that we should love the Lord with all our heart. We should love our neighbor as ourselves. It's a command of God. I'm going to explain this story in a minute here. Why God wants us to walk in love? Because walking in love is the best way to preach the gospel. In my observation, uh, in the past 43 years of being a Christian, I noticed that people who walk in love and are generous to people and com- show compassion to people, even though they're not good speaker at all, they just quiet and smile and love and give and serve. They Gain more soul into the kingdom than people who can preach very well, but never give to anybody. Because they give, they love. People are touched by love, not by your speech. You can speak, 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 but you don't love people. People don't care. But when you show love, people want to listen. Because your love touched their heart. John chapter 13. Listen carefully. 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you. The old commandment is the ten commandments of Moses. This is a new commandment Jesus gave to the church, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, not by the cross on your neck, not by you quote the scripture. Not by your degree from the school, not by your title in the church, elders, deacons, evangelists, pastor, apostle, not by your title, by love, by you showing love, will all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What is the best witness? To the society, to the lost and dying world, that Jesus is real, Jesus is good, heaven is real, God loved them. What is the best witness? You love, you love one another. People come and see you love one another, and you love them. And after you love them, they will open their hearts and say, "Why are you guys so different?" And you can share who Jesus is to them. Actually, uh, I don't have time. Maybe I should read. I say, yeah. Okay, let's turn to. I say, yeah. Chapter six. Okay. I say, yeah. Chapter six, verse nine. He said, "Go and tell these people." Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. So a lot of people in the world they heard the gospel, they listen to sermon, and they don't want to believe in Jesus. Make the heart of these people calloused, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. So the devil close people's eyes. The devil make the ears of people dull. They don't want to hear the gospel. Otherwise. Now the antidote, the answer, the medication to resolve this: they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, turn to what? Turn to God, and be healed. I love this scripture. This is the way I use for evangelism. I love people. Greet people, show love, smile to people, feed people, 
give gift to people, open home for people to come, pick them up, love people. The Bible say, otherwise they might see with their eyes. They need to see first. Wow, Christians are loving. Christians are generous, giving, serving like this man, the Samaritan man who served, who gave to this injured Jewish man. He loved. He took action of giving, showing mercy and compassion. He was so generous. And when people saw, see with their eyes, their ears shall open and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. I thank God for American missionary when I was a young man. They love so much. They love us. They give. They show goodness to us, and really opened my heart to study the Bible. They tried to win the Buddhist man like me by showing love to me. So please let people see with their eyes that you are loving people. You are like this man. John chapter 15 verses 10 to 12. Okay, God say first commandment: You love God. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment: that you love one another as I have loved you. How do you show love to Jesus? Obey His commandments. And what is His commandment? Love one another. You don't see God, but you see brothers and sisters. When I show love to David, many David here. <laughs> David, David, David. When I show love to David, I don't say the last name. I show love to God. That's the way I show love to God by showing love to people around me. The priests and the Levites, this pastor and the elders and the care group leader and the worship leaders, walk by this man. Again, the priests and the Levites they were Jews. The man in German was a Jew. You know, they walk by and they just go to the other side. Even though they know the Bible, even though they can quote the Scripture, they have title and authority and position in the church. They walk the other side. Maybe they're busy. They have a job to do. They have to go. Maybe they don't want to make their hand dirty with blood. Maybe they afraid that the thief will come back and kill them as well. Maybe they. Don't have any equipment to help, no bandage, no wine to help. But they say no to help that man. They don't love that man the same nationality. They don't care. Opposite to the Samaritan man, the Samaritan man. You need to understand that in that generation, the Jews a little bit looked down on the Samaritan. That the Jews think that they are more superior than the Samaritan, but this Samaritan man came and saw the injured man. He spent time. He used his wine, his bandage, his donkey, his car, spent money to go to the hotel or to the inn. Spent time, energy, service, help, money, material, everything to show love to this. Foreign man, the Jew was a foreign man to him. So we, what we learn about showing love here? Number one, I'm so glad we are international church. We accept every nationality. Amen. We love people no matter what background they have, nationality, skin color, educational background, social background, financial background. It doesn't matter. We show love to everybody. That is the love of God. We don't look at your skin color or your 
job, title, position, we love you unconditionally, and we should practice that. The Chinese should love the Indonesian. The Vietnamese should love the Chinese. We should love one another. We should not separate and have discrimination against each other. We should love every nationality, every background. And when you love, you take action by spending your time, your energy, your serve, spend money, whatever you can do to help, to serve, because you love. It's wonderful to walk in love like that. And if you can do that out of love, the Lord would give you eternal life. And the Lord will give you the blessing. You know, in school, sometimes kids are left out because they are discriminated by another group of kids. Oh, you're different. I'm not going to talk to you. We should not do that in this church. We should accept everyone, love everybody, show love and give and help and forgive. No one is perfect in the world. We all make mistakes. When we love, no, oh, okay. I'm not going to focus on your weakness and your own fault. I'm going to focus on your goodness and I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to love people unconditionally. That is the love of Jesus Christ. Let me read a couple more scripture. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 10. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. Don't owe anybody money. If you borrow, please return, okay? Don't cheat your debt. Just pay back. Pay your taxes. Pay your doctor's bill. Every time I get the bill from dentist, oh, I love to pay bill. <laughs> because of that dentist have to hire people, have to pay for the rent. So I love to write a check and send. Mm, hallelujah. I don't owe anybody. But we can all love. We gonna love. Except for your obligation to love one another, if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. This and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. You see how many scriptures talk about this? Galatians, James, Romans, Matthew, Luke, again and again. This is a big subject. It's a big subject. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. When you love, you fulfill the requirements of God's law. And when you love, you don't hurt anybody. You will not gossip. You will not spread bad news, slander, or cheat, or scam somebody, or make somebody hurt. You will not hurt anybody when you love. Sometimes you may be tempted to open your mouth and say something bad about somebody, and that cause that person to lose reputation, shut your mouth. Don't open your mouth and say it. If you can hit back, say something back. I already wrote a sermon how to overcome anger. I'm going to preach one of these days. Because when you get angry, you want to slash back. And you say, no, I'm not going to slash back because I'm going to hurt them. I just get rid of that. Always think, I'm not going to do anything to hurt anybody because I love them. Last scripture I want to read. 1 John 3, 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with action, actions. Love produce action just like this Samaritan man. He gave, he served, he helped, he put, put the bandage, he did everything in actions and in truth, in sincerity. 
Love produces action. Are you going to practice what you learned today? From now on, you're going to walk in love. How should we love? We love other people in action. We don't hurt anybody. Always love even your enemy. Definitely, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. You need to walk by faith. You need to walk in the wisdom and the fear of God. But your main motivation in walking in this life is to love people. Always love people. Even people who hurt you or talk bad about you. Just love them. Forgive them. Don't hold grudges. If you forgive, you're happy. You know, hurt people, hurtful people, hurt people. Do you know that? So don't let anyone hurt you. Just love them so that you will not hurt anybody. This is I notice. People who get hurt by somebody always hurt other people by mouth, by t- doing something to make you, make other people get mad. Let go. Love people. Don't hold the hurt anymore. Just love people. And you will not hurt anybody anymore. If you can walk in love, you will be so happy. You shall be so full of blessing because you are doing what God tells you to do. Amen? Amen. It's a good reminding. What is the most important commandment? Love one another. So please love each other in the church. Love people around you. Love your your Um, co-workers at the workplace. Love your parents. Love your siblings. Love everybody. It doesn't matter what other people do, you love. You cannot command other people to do what God says, but you yourself do it. You love people unconditionally. Amen? Amen? Smile. Say word of encouragement. Give. Serve. Be faithful, help them, whatever you can do to build them up, to give life to people, encourage people, pray for people, bless people, help people when they fall down, we help them to get up, we pray for them. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us the most important commandments in the Bible. Lord, We want to have eternal life. We don't want to be fake Christians. We don't want to be surprised the day we die that we are not making it to heaven. We want to be true disciples of Jesus Christ. And the way to show, Lord, that we are true disciples is that we love you with all our heart and we love our neighbor as ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us through all these many, many scriptures again and again and again. And the story you talk about the Samaritan man. Lord, we don't want to be religious, know a lot of Bible, but prideful and look down on other people. We want to be gentle, compassionate, merciful, gracious, forgiving, giving, generous, helping other people. May your Holy Spirit remind us every day that we owe everybody else the love of God. Thank you, Lord. If you want to go to heaven, you want to be a truly born-again Christian, why don't you follow my prayer right now? Confess with your mouth. Father in heaven, I want to have eternal life. I want to be reconciled to you. You are my creator. Many times I ignored you. I rebelled against you. From today on, Jesus is my savior. He is my Lord. He died for me and saved me. He was raised from the dead 
on the third day. Lord Jesus, you are the loving God. Come into my heart. Sit on the throne of my life. Fill my heart with your unconditional love. My life will be changed from today. I shall walk in faith, in love, in the fear of God, in the wisdom of God, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. My name is recorded in the book of life in heaven now. I will see you in heaven. Why I'm here, Lord? Give me a long, healthy life to serve you, to discover your purpose for my life. I want to live for your purpose. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so proud of you that you listened to the whole teaching, and I believe that the promise of God will come true to your life. In Psalm 119, verses 98 to 99, say, "Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they." Are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I believe the word of God will make you wiser than other people, and you will practice what you learn. God bless you. I will see you in other teachings. Thank you so much for spending time with me. God poured His fire on the day of Pentecost, and He still opened heaven to pour out His fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you, brings revival into your life, send you out. To Preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life, and you become fruitful, and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.